Shane Dawson, but you know when that kid at school is going around telling everyone that that kid's gay, that kid's gay, that kid's gay. Mm-hmm. When you really you find out a few years later that it was the kid who wanted everyone else to be gay that was right. actually gay. Is Shane Dawson that with sociopaths? <laughs> yeah. We're setting the question. We're going to try and answer that in this podcast. You're a sociopath. You're a sociopath. And so are you. Yeah. And so are you. They're all fucking sociopaths. Maybe all this empathy we've seen from Shane Dawson is him exploiting people for views on his channel, and he's the real sociopath. That's sociopathic. But Shane keeps looking at the camera, going, gonna like doing season. you, like a lot of the time. It's weird. Isn't it? They I'm, made a compilation just of Shane's looks to the camera. <laughs> I must admit, he does. He makes me laugh because. That's the thing, though. When you're that aware, you can't then... I, I don't know. I you can't then play dumb. Yeah, let's do the pod. Uh, uh. Ready? Ready? <laughs> Sorry, cunt. <clears throat> it's Friday, Friday. Come does some work on Friday. Oh, yeah. A nice, cool Diet Coke. Um, That's no, not a sponsorship, so we're not... Uh, True Jolly podcast episode. Is it 103, I think we're on? It's 103. Yeah. We promised each other we'd do 100 together, but then... Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's all right. Things got in the way. Well, I was still using the camera in a way. Um, podca- podcast, podcast, I've got actually, so I've written some things down because to be honest, it's been a big week in the world of YouTube. It's been a big month. It's been um, a long time since you and I just sat down alone. Shane Dawson sort of took over YouTube, this uh, documentary maker. I've seen. You're the real documentary maker on I'm YouTube. I'm a documentary we, maker. We all yeah. know that, the real motherfucker. Um, I wanted to talk about, you, you see, you've seen some of it. I've seen episode one. Episode two came out last night, but yeah. I was... Uh, I've seen episode two as well, by the way. I've seen both episodes. Tell me a little bit about it, because you and I had our thoughts when we uh, saw the trailer. Yeah, we saw how much he hyped it up. I, I respect the grind, like, I, and I actually... The only reason I'm bringing this up is because it's content worth talking about. So first things yeah. first, I want to give him credit for that. It's not like 99% of YouTube content, which is phoned in. He's put effort into this. Yeah. So uh, It's not an iPhone review, but it's nah, good. He, he's, he's done, um, he's done a... He's got a little nice little formula of like drama mixed with hype, yeah. mixed with storytelling, mixed with good editing. So and, and revealing emotion. Yeah, and you yeah. package all that together and by YouTube standards, it's it's level it's a level up. It's um I can understand. That. You know, but there are things that, from a person who's made a documentary before which we both have, mm. you see in that, and now everyone can criticize everyone, so I'm not trying to be a cunt here, but like there were points where I was like because the amount of hype behind this series, because Shane's got such a big audience, has been enormous. Now, I'm obviously like not his core audience anyway. No. Uh, the, the documentaries he's made before this were about YouTube as that I wouldn't have, uh, one of the, one last called Hannah something or other, and, and Jeffrey Starr, who's that fashion guy. Who, incredibly emotional. Or woman, I'm, I, I don't mean to be. Yeah. No, <laughs> so that fashion me. person. Anyway. Incredibly emotional documentaries <laughs> where people broke down and, you know. Is that what happened? Because I didn't really watch them because obviously I kind of know uh, Jake at this point. So, um, I mean, he was on our fucking podcast, but um, I didn't really go in with Jake because it was sort of a an unplanned podcast where I didn't really have time to do my research and it was all about the fight. But um, yeah, first episode, I was just a bit like, I wasn't expecting this. For, from really? all the hype, I was expecting him to come with a lot more. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you. I guess I was just, uh, the the trailer really builds it up, mm-hmm. doesn't it? To the point where you, you think, wow, this is going to be, there's going to be something really sensational yeah. that's going to happen during episode one which yeah, will make he, he's think- hyping it I think almost too much like, and I understand the game that this guy wants views he wants his effort to be seen by a lot of people but you can hype it up to a point where when you eventually get to the point it's building to people are going to be left unfulfilled I do you know what I think I uh, so for me it felt a little bit like watching something like The Staircase where Jake Paul is basically accused of m- murdering being a YouTube, sociopath, being a sociopath without actually murdering anyone. Though that's a, the staircase had it beat for that reason. There was a real murder in that. Yeah. Whereas this is just painting a guy out to be uh, someone who could actually murder someone. Basically, yes. is that that's how the potential for, for me to set the. To be fair, he's done a good thing in setting out a question to be answered Absolutely. straight away. 
is Jake Paul a sociopath? But for me, like, I'm just sat, sat there straight away going like, well, where did this come from? Why, why, why is this the question you, and I yeah. feel like he sat down and thought, how do we make this a thing? Exactly, now that, that's how, exactly what I thought. How do we yeah. make a documentary worth doing about Jake Paul? Because A, I want the views from working with Jake Paul. Mm -hmm. It's gonna blow my career up massively and dickheads like me are gonna talk about it. But really, I need a reason to justify to my own audience why I would fuck with Jake Paul while still maintaining the credibility level of, of being, oh, well, I'm here to judge Jake Paul. I'm not actually lowering myself down to his. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the reality of the matter is, is whether you like it or not, if you're a fan of Shane Dawson, these two motherfuckers are working together to help each other. And that is the truth. Yeah, I mean, we. I also think when you watch a documentary or when you watch anything, you should almost be able to lose yourself in it and almost not be aware of the process. Yeah. And this documentary to me feels very aware of the process of making a documentary. It feels a little bit like they went, right, we're going to make a six part series mm -hmm. or an eight part series. And then we're going to fit the content back and whatever we get, we're going to make it fit over this many episodes. Right. Well, definitely. Because that first episode, once again, I rate the guy higher than most YouTubers. This isn't me saying you're he's a bad YouTuber. Yeah. You're allowed but to critically evaluate. It was a complete fluff piece. Um, uh, most of it was just clips from Jake Paul's channel. If, if Most people will know that the guy's wild. He does mad shit. Mm. We've seen it all before. And, and fair enough, paint a picture. I don't dispute using a few minutes of that. Mm. But mate, a full episode. It, 45 how he stretched that to 45 minutes I don't know I couldn't believe it at the mm. end yeah it I was mean, like is this necessary it was also partly that I think we are coming at it from an angle of what we would do if we wanted to make a documentary I would have condensed that right down to yeah well get the point the guy's a nutcase and he's self-absorbed all right get to the point there was a lot of does it does it need 25 30 minutes of that there do you was know what a mean? lot of use of the word sociopath throughout the episode to people who didn't I, even I probably couldn't tell you if someone was a sociopath because I've not studied psychology. I'm, I'm not in that field. I never yeah. does know sociopath. Sorry, yeah, I forgot about Sorry, his, mate. I forgot about Sorry. that low end. Degree in psychology, yeah. don't you know? In my limited experience, I'd say that uh, Jake Paul is a sociopath. Sorry, that limited experience being you've watched his videos. Yeah, have you ever met the guy? Not in person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was one of those where everything had to be caveated a little bit because we didn't quite know where things were going. There were moments where... I think, I, so one of the things that got me a bit, because I'm, I'm watching this through not being a fan. So I, yeah. I, I feel like I can, as a creator myself, I can digest this in a different way. If you exactly. love Shane Dawson, mm -hmm. you're going to enjoy him having uh, a mini panic attack over the fact that Jake, Jake Paul's left him an answer machine message. Right. But for me, I'm like, just flit into the fucking message, mate. It's yeah. just an un literally. He's a bloke. I like, li that. listen to the message. That's why I didn't. I didn't. Quite what is the get big deal? I'm shaking. I'm like, what? I mean, you're an overreactor, mate. Like, if we're going to diagnose things out here, you know, we'll start with you. <laughs> you know it's so, is it? Is <laughs> it? Fucking hell, son. Is it also though that? we've slightly normalized Jake Paul's behavior. So it's actually quite a reasonable thing to be worried about being so close and trying to do a hit piece on someone like this. I think that- He built um, that up. So I've, sh I've, I am, like I say, I'm not familiar with all his work, but I did watch him on the No Jumper podcast. Yeah. Where FouseyTube came slower on there. And one thing that came across to me, similar to yourself at times, is he would give these looks to the camera, which shows how aware socially Very Shane Dawson yeah. is and how he was communicating with the audience like yeah we all know that this is fucking this is crazy yeah, yeah. Um, and he made me laugh a lot I thought right. this guy's so funny and from him to be so aware to then go to be the opposite where he's overreacting himself and I'm like well, you're either really socially aware and not phased by the fact that FouseyTube, a literal crackpot, no yeah. offense, but is having a meltdown next to you. And then all of a sudden that doesn't phase you. You can look to a camera and make the funny jokey eyes, but then all of a sudden an answer machine message, you're shaking. Uh, that is an inconsistency. Do you think that that's part of the problem is um, when you're looking at the role of Shane Dawson, he is uh, the emotional guy, he's the guy who can connect with people. There is then a bit 
of a disconnect when you see someone for me i look at food tube and i see a tragedy i don't see something to laugh at mm. i don't see someone that i think this is funny i see someone who's struggling with life so much and there's a load of people around him going toughen up a little bit and you know be be more of a man why are you acting this way you deserve this basically holding like some sort of a kangaroo court where they basically go you're guilty of lying trying to manipulate yeah. these things and then people judge him and I find it weird that Shane Dawson then picks that role when Fousey Tube's involved, but the other way when Jake Paul's involved. It's a little bit weird to because me. he knows the role he knows the role he's playing at each time to me. And to me that yeah. seems a little bit I, I don't know him. It, that doesn't seem It doesn't line up, does seems it? Seems a bit disingenuous yeah, to me. It Do you know what I mean? Line up that action. Yeah. Because to me, Fousey Tube is in need of a lot more help than Jake Paul is. Ex- Although Jake Paul may also be uh, someone who does need... No, but if, we, if we're going to diagnose anyone, I think Tube is the one who probably needs more uh, psychologists coming to his house yeah. than Jake Paul does. Do I you mean, know what I'm saying? One question I did think was quite interesting that you raised in the documentary is, are we all in this industry sociopathic to some extent? Because no, we sit down and, and it's performative. So the second episode that you didn't see was mm. him... Uh, once it, there's a lot left in there like mm. him going to a psychologist's house I'm like this could have been in the first episode right, like yeah, yeah. you know get to the psychologist's ep- house in the first episode and construct your argument of what is a sociopath to start off with yeah like that could have all been in the first that's the thing when it's been so hyped up once again I do feel a bit of a letdown because standards on YouTube are low so it takes very little to impress people right. but I did enjoy the fact that they were setting out a stall mm-hmm. of, right, this is a sociopath. Once again, it lasted like fucking 40 minutes when yeah. it could have been done in probably 10. Mm-hmm. But you can't help but think when you listen to a, a, a soci- the, the description of a sociopath, like, yeah, everyone has tendencies of, of this sort of, I know people who are good human beings who lie. I know people who are good human beings who manipulate at mm-hmm. times. We've all got that ability That's partly to part do of shitty things to each other. It doesn't make, so yeah. what if, it reminds me of Peep Show mm-hmm. where, you know, they're, they're trying to get um, each other sectioned and then he goes, I should have you sectioned for trying to have me sectioned. Yeah. I'm like, at this point, like it's getting a bit like on Twitter, everyone's pointing the finger, you're a sociopath. Yeah. And this is a word that's being banded about willy nilly. It is though, <laughs> and there are a lot of words. That's part of the problem. Uh, is that we are we are very quick to use very serious terms. Mm-hmm. So if if someone's suspected of speaking to a young person, instantly the phrase paedophile is branded around. Mm-hmm. I'm not, there are legitimate paedophiles in the but world. There are horrible people. In this people culture, we, we, everyone wants to pin a name on each other. Yeah. When in reality, Jake Paul probably isn't a sociopath he's mm. probably more likely to be a self-absorbed prick who got famous very young right. and had that um i'm great reinforced by 17 million people fucking over clicking over on his again. videos mm. over and over again and thought you know it's like i'm great yeah and it's gone too far and at some point like with logan i feel like there's a the he's having a reality check oh there's one coming at some point but that doesn't mean you can sit there and go sociopath and one of the other problems i had is in the edit it's, it's a fucking well edited video yeah, but probably, yeah. there's when they when they're naming um parts of behavior that line up with sociopathic tendencies you've got people like chris brown just thrown in there in an interview that he did is chris brown a sociopath because if i'm chris brown i'm watching that going i'm fucking suing you mate because you've literally just made me look like a fucking crazy person yeah and like and other people in there who maybe haven't done even as bad of things as chris brown has done and it's like, you can't just make people look like they're sociopath. a sociopath. Sorry. Sociopath, sociopath. It's getting banded about everywhere. I'm like, there is, can, can we, this is crazy to be pointing the finger at so many people. Here. There is also, so you spoke But he did about, say one in 25, so maybe I'm the one who's wrong. Or maybe you're one of the 25. Maybe I'm one of them. Um, maybe I am. I mean, to be fair, you are sitting on YouTube uh, with a huge Coke sponsorship talking about uh, him. From the, Colombia, thank you very much. When Louis Theroux first started Nothing out... Nothing but the best. When Louis Theroux first started out, when Big Brother first started out, when any of these yeah. things first started out, people were much less aware of the effects of them. So they'd gone Big Brother and people would just act normally. Mm-hmm. Like they'd, act, they'd think they were acting normally and they wouldn't be aware of <coughs> the whole process. Now people go on Love Island, which is the new Big Brother, 
aware of but everything that will happen they'll they'll be manipulated there'll be challenges there's all this kind of thing but uh, but the thing is even now and this is the thing that i'm worried that youtube will get to um is recently a woman who went on love island committed suicide yeah and she'd said i didn't get the aftercare i didn't get the like reintroduction into the real world i was just left to rot there, there's by, something in production uh, which is called duty of care and so uh on things like X Factor, on things like Britain's Got Talent, even on, on Big Brother and things like that, you have a duty of care to the people who are on it because you're get, as a production company, you're gaining a lot from using the personality and using the person. 100%. And so you have a duty of care. There were questions at times as to whether fan channels had the same um, responsibility. responsibility. The, for those who don't know, if you're an American, fan channels are where football fans rant after a game, but then somehow become overnight celebrities as yeah. well. And they get their 15 minutes, as mm. um, that artist said. Sometimes so, they drag it out a little longer than that. No, it, it, the whole point is uh, 15 minutes is the arbitrary mm. amount of time he put on a flash in the pan. Mm -hmm. So there was questions over whether that was the case as well. The same sort of goes for the YouTube guys and the famous people now. But what I'm saying is, now we're aware of the process, we're much more aware of it. Documentary making becomes different because people watching documentaries are now so aware of the process of making a documentary that they will begin to incept it in a way. They'll begin to look, yeah. it, analyze. That's it's, kind it's of a, a good thing about it's, it. It's a little bit like when, um, you know, the character Borat came out and yeah. then people became aware of, all right, I've got to watch out for this sort of shit. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's a bit annoying for me because I actually kind of, I like the format mm -hmm. for the record. I do like the idea of living with a YouTuber. And I actually came to you with the same idea before Shane well, Dawson. When we first started XO, we yeah. were talking about doing, you know, living with blah, blah, yeah. blah, doing, the, going, not spending necessarily time YouTubers, with people. but no. some YouTubers maybe. Um, just, just general sociopaths. Yeah. We weren't talking just about YouTubers. <laughs> um, and the Louis Theroux is obviously the godfather of that um, weird weekend uh, style. And, I, and I, I admire Shane for going into this, but yeah, I think when I'm watching it, there's so many red flags. Like at one point hmm. he's having a conversation with the sociopath expert, um, the psychologist, and he's like, yeah, I noticed they use sad music when they want to convey a sad emotion. Does that mean, and they might not even know that it's sad all the while, they're having a chat using sad on, music on a couch, yeah. just a, a chat like me and you with what can only be described as horror like saw music yeah, yeah. to try and make this sound like we're in the mind of Jake Paul and it's a crazy spooky place. Yeah. And I'm like, you're fucking doing it right now. Yeah. You are doing the same thing that you're pointing out that Jake Paul does. So who who's a real sociopath? Yeah. If you are doing so that's kind of the that's the conclusion we're getting to first Unreal, of all man. i think you should have a chat with emma kenny about what uh, a sociopath is for Definitely. your own purposes and define some of these things yeah. secondly if what is the end goal for you of a documentary telling a story right but the problem is is sometimes profit overcomes integrity and i think with this with this documentary series I'm already saying that weighing all over the shop so is integrity something which has been degraded over time in media or do you think de integrity never existed and just let me finish this do you think integrity never existed and because we were so new to television radio constructing things that weren't just to play or something live we were naive enough to think that there was integrity in TV and we were fooled into thinking that documentaries made in the 50s and the 60s by white guys who all had degrees and were all qualified were more, had more integrity than someone does now or are we just aware of the lack of integrity for a lot of people? That's a very complex question. Mate. And that's why I'm asking you because you're smart enough to break it down. All right, we're in an industry right now, we, me and you, we come from different backgrounds. You, mm -hmm. you come from a documentary making background, I come from offshore fucking deep sea, right? I, I'm finding that a lot less people give a fuck about what they make than I first right. thought. To put it, just narrow it down really quickly. Um, I think Shane has got integrity, but I think he's willing to compromise in order to also make something that's going to catapult his career. Right. And I would do the same thing to a degree, mm -hmm. but there has to be a, a, a line. And when Jake Paul makes a video before, it says, watch this before you watch the Shane Dawson. And he says, Shane talked to me and said, I'm going to go down the serial killer route and I'm going to make it seem like you're this guy. Uh, but you know, and. 
for for Jake Paul to let the cat out the bag that it's an agreement between these two guys that that's what they were going to do entirely and that eventually because of the nature of Shane from his own admission in the first two episodes he likes to have a happy ending so there's got to be a start drama issues happy ending I, I already know where he's going with this pretty much and, and, and I might be wrong but the fact that they're like he's even admitted he wants a happy ending which is I appreciate him being so honest but the fact that Shane you've admitted that many times but yeah especially yeah. to uh, my masseuse we but know. the thing is Jake Paul has let the cat out the bag that this isn't when you're saying being honest being you know having integrity okay. there's there's compromises already being made and so far I'm just feeling like it's lightweight. It's a bit fluffy. It's That's a bit bullshit. Yeah. Um, at one point, there was an, an old lady throwing a cat into the bin as a, as a clip of a sociopath. I'm like, does that really need to be in here? Like, what's that? What's the? Has Jake Paul done that? No. Is that relevance to any of this? No. I what did we feel doing? that way. In episode one, there's a, um, a clip of a plane crash. What, what's that? Exactly. That made me feel a little bit... Um, I get it. I mean, you know, in in the EXO trailer, we use a lion this, jumping on another lion this, to this. express a bear fighting another bear to express something. Mm. That's but that's a trailer for something which is playful. Mm. This is ser- this is portraying itself yeah. as a serious way of evaluating a person's mental state, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe they have a duty of care towards Jake. Although maybe everyone, including me, is naive enough to then go, well. He's not. I don't think Jake's conscious as a person in this. Maybe Jake's, like you're saying, fully conscious of where this is going and why he caveated yeah. it before. So watching it a certain way. My question, the final conclusion for me was, uh, and one thing that we sort of evaluated when I was making documentaries on my courses: what is the final goal of your documentary? What are you trying to make here? I, I me, I would try and tell a story. I think we spoke to Will about this. Mm-hmm. Um, the podcast. He says that we're looking at it from a a documentary maker's point of view where we're wanting uh, air the truth, um, you know, not overly dramatized, just tell the real story. Mm-hmm. And what Will saying is that this isn't a documentary as much as it's there for entertainment purposes. And it's just called a documentary and shot in the style of a documentary to make it, he didn't say this, but I think maybe yeah. It's make, to make it more believable so that you feel more invested. And then when the entertainment grabs you and the drama grabs you, you don't care that it's a bit bullshit now. You're enjoying it nonetheless. It's the suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Is what it's, 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 yeah. it's part reality, part fake. And, and that's the fun in it. It's, that's what it takes. It's So in many ways, you're sort of comparing it to like a... A Batman or no, a DC it's, it's, universe. It's like, sort of um, so for example, Jersey Shore, like Love Island, a lot of this sort of shit is semi scripted, or or if it's not scripted, it's edited in a certain way to make it far more entertaining than mm. the actual event was. Mm. Like, for example, having a half an hour chat with a psychologist, when in reality, that's quite a nice little relaxing chat, maybe a good podcast. Mm. But when you hide all the editing around it, all of the dark music around it, and make it feel like we're sitting in Jake Paul's brain. Well, you know, that's not an accurate depiction of what was going on, but but the fact they, that they're hyping it and it's making it more fun. I guess it's where does it stop? It's the fact that you as a viewer are aware of that and you go on that journey with him knowing that he's pretending to be in a brain or wherever oh. it is. That sort of achieves his end goal is that actually he did say, I think in episode one, something along the lines of, I just want to start that conversation. Mm-hmm. I want people to think do I want to give this person a view? Do I want to buy this person's merch? Do I want that? And if his end goal was to start a conversation, which was, is Jake Paul a good guy? Not to for his documentary to make the conclusion, but to start people questioning that, then he's found an entertaining way of raising that question. And that, I respect that. is a big achievement. Yeah, I, I, I think fair play because I think too many people watch YouTubers for what they get out of it and don't think about what the YouTuber themselves are getting out of that relationship. Yeah. So maybe think when you click on someone's videos, you're doing them a big favor and maybe treat that a bit more as, do I really want to help this person? And not, do I want to feed into the trick that a lot of these people use, which is clickbait, etc. But that is where, and I understand we've all done this as, uh, you know, YouTube guys, everyone everyone may get to a milestone thanks to the people who support them. And people are right to do that. But it does construct the idea around it of the sense of community and the sense of, you know, I'm with all you guys. 
Sometimes how, how can a community that's that big be yeah. be it's together? So, Seventeen million people is a diverse set of people. I you love know, all you guys. Yeah. And no, you don't. That's you it's, don't know them. There is when you begin to question like the structure of YouTube now and the structure mm. of even because the funny thing is Jake Paul has probably got more followers than a lot of other platforms have got in the first place. Yeah. Like there's more people probably that you know use and interact with Jake Paul on a daily basis than go and use SoundCloud or mm. whatever. It's different to the way that previous communities like television, all those sort of things were constructed. I think we're in unknown waters here. And I don't think, I said this in that video, you know, the XO video where I'm talking about um, uh, how media evaluates mm -hmm. YouTube. I don't think we will like the effects of where, where YouTube is going. And I, don't, I think we're blindly walking into an alley of not great content and tricking ourselves into thinking that we're going down the right way because we're all making money from yeah, it. Yeah, I think the need for drama to entertain people, it, it's I, dangerous. I, I find my, I was thinking about this the other day, I was driving along and I was listening to um, Eminem and MGK's mm -hmm. song, like just sort of, because I was trying to think which, which one do I actually prefer, even though, even though Eminem's is higher level uh, I just kind of, I really like MGK's song. Right. Anyway, I was thinking about the need for drama and why, how, why am I so entertained by the fact that these two guys are talking shit about each other when they're not going to have a fight? Nothing's ever going to come of this. Why is this so entertaining? And it's the same thing that we say on YouTube time and time again. It's the same reason why when Shane is on the No Jumper podcast and he's given the sly looks to the camera and being funny because he's so aware of what's going on in the situation and playing it down and acting like fussy tubers overreacting by the big meltdown he's having. And then on his own video, he's going, um, I I'm sure I made a note of this actually. So I remember being like, I was, I was like watching this like, is what that real? Fuck, yeah. um, is this yeah. real life? He, he said He said th that this documentary with Jake Paul was the breaking moment of his life, the breaking point of his life. And I, I remember being like, God, I, I, I'm at the point now where you've hyped this up and built this up so much that I, I, I'm almost like, this is ridiculous. I'm expecting babies to be Not, born at the end. Do yeah, you know what like, I mean? I, I'm like, you've, you've, you should have more on the content we, we haven't even, you're two episodes in, you've not even walked in the guy's house yet. Where's the content? Give yeah. me the real shit and less of the hype and the drama and the bullshit because yeah. everything we've seen in two episodes, I could have just got you that in five minutes. Do you know what I mean? There's, um, I know I'm bringing up a lot of stuff to do with degrees or whatever, but on my degree, there was a, a way of evaluating. For the record, you have a degree in this shit. For, just yeah. in case anyone who has just stumbled on this. So, no, you know, qualified. Got a first. The, uh, that's the best you can get. So <laughs> it's um, the- Not me, I'm just a daft cunt. No, uh, no, but we hang out so much, it's sort of osmosis. Yeah, basically. I, I can deep sea dive, you got a media degree. Thank you. Um, most people call both those things fucking useless in daily life. Oh, genuinely they are, yeah. they are, fully. Um, the, <laughs> so there's, um, there are some interesting ways of evaluating these sorts of people and interesting ways of evaluating people like Jake and Shane and those guys. One thing that it does ask, and a big question you should always ask is, what are we borrowing from the past that we're just bringing up again? And we are almost recycling, reusing, reinventing. And I gotta admit, I watch a lot of YouTube right now and I see almost Shakespearean tragedy, uh -huh. Shakespearean drama. Mm -hmm. You can map some of these characters that are on Did YouTube Shakespeare now. Did Shakespeare put on a play and Drake didn't turn up to that? Is that what happened? But there's elements of that. Like, <laughs> imagine if Drake had turned up to a Shakespeare God's play. Yeah. <laughs> God's Macbeth's plan. Oh my right? God. So, it, is this a microphone I see before me? So it was, there, to be fair, there is William Lospear, is probably my favorite account. Oh. So um, there's people like, uh, and this is a compliment to uh, Keemstar. People like Keemstar are like the puck, uh, that's from A Midsummer's Night Dream, who's sort of this playful character who will sort of, sit on the periphery and introduce some form of drama, mm -hmm. introduce a challenging question, introduce something which undermines the powerful, and it will just slightly sh throw them off kilter and maybe show another aspect of their character. Mm -hmm. Similar to Shane, similar to a Jake or a Logan who's like a, you know, a, maybe one of the main characters in the Midsummer Night's Dream. There's quite a few characters that have 
psychotic episodes in Shakespeare. If you look at things like Twelfth Night and things like that, I don't really remember much of that. I was I was pretty bad in school. But the point is, there are there's a lot of tragedy and a lot of the same drama. Now, yeah, that's what a it's lot all of about. drama and the same. But no one's gonna no one wants to watch tragedy YouTube. No, but they the, want the, to watch drama no, YouTube because yeah, tragedy YouTube is, is tragic. Is, I think people have quickly realised that you know we went from the original YouTube, which was pets doing tricks, and then vlogging your shopping hauls, and then you know FIFA and whatever and all of these little waves but eventually people have realized just like they did with rap music that the most entertaining thing is to watch people freak out call each other names just have a fucking fit but and and so there's I, I just encouraging people to go even if you don't know about Shakespeare or you don't give a fuck about Shakespeare and I don't know why you wouldn't if you understand the way that people are making tragedy now look at the plot of uh, Twelfth Night and look at the plot of um, I'm not A Midsummer Night's off. Dream. I'm not going to. Okay. <laughs> Logan Paul. You've, compare, to, you've told us enough, man. Logan Paul and Jake Paul compare to so many of those characters in those things. Uh -huh. Proud men who have built up a lot and have a lot to lose uh -huh. and find different ways around humiliation, around loss, around all these things and struggle with those ideas. Mm. And there are many people who look in throughout that play and play with them and will... Yeah. Uh, but you know, bringing it back to the around. whole sociopath thing, yep. you can be a sociopath. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Like I'm not saying that that's not possible, but equally, you can also be a less emotional person and still be perfectly normal and perfectly fine. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I'm not. I don't know where these guys sit on the spectrum. I've spent time with Logan. For the record, I don't think he's a fucking sociopath. I think he. Um, I think he's very careful. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like I, you would be. I don't think he's a sociopath. No. I, I think he's a he's not an a overly emotional guy at all. He's he's on the low side when it comes to that. But I do not think he's a sociopath. No, I don't think he's a sociopath. He's and, a bit mad though, I must admit. <laughs> but he has a mad life. He's yeah. he's constructed this crazy yeah. life. And can um, you imagine all those people relying on you on a daily basis for a paycheck or for a, a job? Yeah. You would worry it, yeah, if I, I stop this, what happens? I, I just think that these guys, like, this is my evaluation of two these two lads after meeting them, because I try and put myself in their shoes. Like, when if I was in my early, like early twenties and I'd acted like an asshole and got a very rich life out of that, and everyone kept reinforcing that the comments, the likes, and all of a sudden I'm chasing. I, I'm like, I could be the I could be the yeah. biggest guy ever. Yeah, you know what I mean. Ever. And 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 all of a sudden you've got a team of people around you licking the arsehole mm. off you, going like, you're going to be the first YouTube billionaire, and you're like, I am, I am. Mm. And and before you know it, you're just trying to find ways of of making the most ridiculous and crazy videos ever. I'm like, I thought about that. I really did. I thought. Yeah, I could have gone down that road. That could mm. have easily happened to me. That could have so easily. If people lick an arsehole enough, it gets sore. <laughs> um, that's it's yeah. true. Put that on a t-shirt. I don't know if that's. I mean, I've spent a lot of time with a woman, but um, anyway, that's another story. The point you is, lick arsehole for an hour. I could, I could understand. I, I'm not saying I'm like either of those two guys. I'm different, but I just understand the road that they've ended up going down. And I think putting that label, yeah, like I said earlier. It's just dangerous because now we're, all these kids are going to be going to school going, fucking sociopath. Yeah. And like, maybe someone's just not. Yeah. So if someone tells a lie, they're instantly a sociopath because they were trying to manipulate someone. Yeah, I, I, I feel like we should, that, that should have come towards the end of the documentary. The, that word shouldn't have even been mentioned. He should have had the psychologist on hand and said, I want you to give me an evaluation of what you think of this guy over the course of this time. And if at the end of the eight episodes, she goes, well, I've, I've thought about everything and I have to say it's the conclusion I've come to yeah. is, is probably a sociopath. Mm. That would have made sense. But for him, as an, a man who isn't educated in that field, to my knowledge, to just drop that in at the start several times, I just thought you've jumped the shark here. There's also the other side, I guess, is he has constructed the whole documentary. He has, he knows that he knows the conclusion. Oh, he, knows he already the knows it. He knows what yeah. he's doing. Uh, he could have he could have recorded a lot of this later and, and come back and hide it in at the start just to fill in the narrative. You so know what I mean? do we? It fi I guess as naive watchers, we're sort of thinking, oh, he's saying this too early. But maybe he has his conclusion. Where he wants to get to maybe things happen later on. Yeah, we'll, maybe we'll he's setting up that structure. I, I, I'm, I'm 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 pointing out criticisms, but he's got my interest. I'll give him that. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him that. I just think what I'll find myself doing if it is this much fluff in future after an hour and a half. Already. Says the guy who's made over 100 podcasts. I will end up just 
skipping a few minutes. Just like, yeah, I do love get the point, Junior. Today, Junior, I was watching a video earlier on YouTube and I found my finger hovering over the double tap on this side just to it's good, you know what I mean? It's a real 10 seconds is just the right amount of time to skip forward, yeah. It exercises the demon, yeah, it does, yeah. I'll tell you what, I um. I've, I mentioned this to you lately. Want to cover it quickly while we're on YouTube? Yeah. Gamers on YouTube. Big. I just I just don't watch them. Uh, they they're huge at the moment. Is that something you cannot abide? Uh, love gaming. Grow love right. love games. FIFA's out today as we record. Yeah, I, it's just um, if you're a, an an entertaining gamer like a doctor disrespect or someone who's got loads of personality. Love that. Yeah. Watch a bit of that. No problem. Maybe he's watching an episode here and there, right? Not still not going to watch a load of it, but I watch it. But to see like people grow so insane, like Ninja, for example, just not because they're particularly like Ninja seems like a cool dude, like nice, nice, like guy. nice guy. Said nice things about the commentary. I love it. Loves you. Thanks very much, mate. But um, to see how huge a following he has built basically of being great at a game that is mind-blowing to me yeah that's like wow in a way that you can't understand it or a, a little bit a little bit why but also a little bit like uh i'm just clearly not entertained by the same other things because i would probably watch him don't get me wrong I, mm. i'd watch an episode and be like if i wanted to get good at the game or i just bought this game and i was really into it i'd watch him for an episode but to get the number of views he's got. I mean, people are watching this all the fucking time. And Not that's, the same audience, that, To me, he, you know, he's playing the same game regularly. You're yeah. saying the same things regularly. You know, he like, once again, he's not the most... He's not Dr. Disrespect type person. He, he seems like a chilled out dude who, you know, you can have a good conversation with. But he's not doing that in the, in the game players. So I don't know what people are getting out of that. Can I play devil's advocate? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, when we were talking about Kanye, you did, we did the whole Kanye West documentary. Mm -hmm. We're make, You are making another one now. Got to um, the point on that, didn't I'm I? I'm helping out. Yeah. So much of life, one and a half hours. Bam. Done. Bam. You're welcome. You're didn't welcome. Me, didn't ask if he was a sociopath once. No. Right? We asked it four times and we couldn't <laughs> conclude. Maybe, maybe I should have, though. So, yeah. I'm it, not going to chain like fair play. <laughs> every documentary in the future. We're making a documentary <laughs> on the queen who died. Was the queen a, a sociopath? sociopath. We find out this evening that's on a, that's a, Sociopaths Now. <laughs> no, the Sociopath Network, mate, we're starting this. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Literally just a channel all about, like, or oh, this person, a sociopath. I would love to walk into... So we have a lot of meetings with, uh, you know, the the agencies, influencer agencies in London, mm. guys who, you know, get to the big companies. Oh, dick and, suckers, aren't they? Some of them, no, I'm joking. maybe. I'm joking, I love them. I would love to walk in and make a presentation on and to these guys and say, and that's why we started the company Sociopaths Inc. We're the latest influencer company of pure sociopaths. <laughs> Guys, all the guys who will extort money out of any young kids. I, I, I've got another idea. Yeah. Sociopath fan TV. Sociopath fan we TV get is the good. reactions yeah. from fans of them who are also sociopaths. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck was he doing out there? I would have broken out lying and manipulation 20 minutes earlier. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I would have made sure that these people knew they had to buy the merch that I was hawking. Oh, God. That's what would work. Oh, like, we need to bring out a sociopath t-shirt. That's for sure. What? We've Just got a merch. warning. Get the most sociopathic merch in the game. Yeah. Sociopath.shop.com. Yeah. <laughs> so, go to socio.path now online. <laughs> oh, God. Put um, in the code socio and you get 20% off 20 today. 20% off. All right. But the funny thing is, it actually makes you add 20% to the end. <laughs> and then when you see it, you come to us and we go... We told you there was a risk, but we're just sociopaths. You can't hold us to the same yeah. standards as your normal influencers. That's the funny thing is, if you put in the code socio, it may take 50% off. It may add 30% off. You just on. don't know what you you're going to get with the sociopath. This is the thing. You never know what you're going to get with You never know what you're going to get with the sociopath. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You trusted me. That's where you fucked up. Your mistake. Yeah. And that's what it says on the receipt. Thank you. You, know, you trust me. <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck is this guy? So, gamers. Shane, imagine Shane Dawson was watching this. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving him too many ideas. <laughs> Save this. Uh, so, Ninja and gamers, that's what we want. Anyway, <coughs> Ninja Gamers. We were talking not long about Kanye West, and we were talking about how you can hear Kanye West's personality 
in his beats. You can mm -hmm. hear the soul, you can hear the sampling, you can hear the way that he does the instrumentation. They're all things that over the years, when you hear it, you go, this is a Kanye West beat instantly. The same with Dr. Dre, the same with any producer out there. Mm -hmm. You know, there are legend, Jay Diller, people mm -hmm. like that, legendary producers that when you hear their beats, you go, that's Jay Diller, mm -hmm. instantly. I'm just wondering, and the same goes for maybe, I feel like with some of my editing, people watch it and they go, I can sort of tell Lawrence has edited this, mm -hmm. or I can, those sorts or of Or directed things. it, yeah. The same goes maybe now for <clears throat> gamers who are out there and their gaming style becomes a personality of sorts. There are seven, eight, nine-year-olds who watch who aren't as skilled, aren't as dexterous as a 21-year-old guy and are watching and are thinking, wow, I really want a game like this guy, watching it, studying it, mm -hmm. trying to work out how they can become like that as well. And it shows elements of their personality that they can game and we can see that it was yeah. that guy playing Fortnite. Yeah, you we make know sense, so. it's Ninja. Yeah. Just through the way he's being playful with the way he's mm -hmm. trying to kill someone. He's not just trying to get a headshot. He's trying to jump 50 feet in the air, jump, bounce off something else, you know, jump on a friend's rocket or whatever you want to do and get to the top of a mountain then kill the final guy in the game that's all expressing that's skill. personality <clears throat> that's yeah. his skill and he's using it in a way that matches his personality yeah yeah I see what you're saying because and not only that I guess with the with Fortnite and how it's taken off as well like um, that's really helped catapult him and I kind of try and equate that to back in the day when I was in my most like when I was gaming from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed yeah. and all I'd stop for was a fucking sandwich yeah if back in those days what kind of sandwich sorry just um Mm, turkey, I'm thinking. Turkey right is now. a great sandwich, turkey isn't it? Turkey with a bit of coleslaw. It's Maybe very a rare. Of crisps. Yeah. Rations. Yeah. Um, it's very rare you'll see a turkey sandwich nowadays. There's not enough turkey sandwiches year round. Only Christmas. Um, we've got. Uh, so, like back in the day, my game was like Metal Gear Solid, mm -hmm. Grand Theft Auto, those type. Of, and I guess if that had been available to watch, like the greats play that game, mm -hmm. people who are like way out of my league, mm -hmm. I would have then watched that. Yeah. So, that, that does make sense. I guess what I'm trying to say is maybe I've grown that a little bit or I haven't got the time. Or it's, just, it's partly time. It's partly that when you get to a certain point in your life, you start to see time slightly differently, mm -hmm. how you spend your time. Also, let's face it, you've got three maybe different yeah. businesses to run at the moment. You've got XO, yeah. you've got True Geordie, and the podcast is almost its own separate thing, yeah. Booking Guests, those sort of, And the kickoff is actually its own animal now. Yeah. Like, that's become such a big show that you spend so much of your week on that. Yeah. So your downtime is actually more not more valuable I don't want to sound pretentious like an entrepreneur no does, it's, it's set, setting up all of that shit as yeah, it? yeah but also you now maybe don't have that same mind time to be able to go I'm going to go and watch someone game for an hour yeah. and 30 minutes and I, th I think that I guess one of the things that's kind of put me off it, to be honest, is I did watch a little bit of one of those tournaments yeah. where like competitive gamers take on each other and I was like a lot of fucking money up for Loads. grabs yeah. I, millions I, I could I could kind of uh, see why that would be exciting to people you know what I mean you're playing your favourite game and you grind on that you're like making sure that you're amazing at that. But the problem is some of these games have computing errors in the programming where you can exploit that and, and the guy to exploit that the first it's not a level, level playing field especially sports games I do you find. think though if you play enough then you'll find those things so it's almost it rewards it, the, it rewards a certain kind of brain which can go a bit like with poker online or something. You can see a system yeah. and you go, I'll just do that over and over. Like yeah, it, Charlie, just, I um, think it, it spoils the fun a little bit when it's down to computing errors and not like, skill. I don't know, like a shooting game, something yeah, yeah. where they are kind of more level playing field, I feel. But anyway, uh, some of these guys get interviewed afterwards and I'm like, wow. Like you. Who are you? I don't know. Like some of them, I just feel like I'm so different to them. I would never be able to connect with. Like when when I watch the UFC or like, I guess sometimes it feels like I'm disconnected with footballers as well a lot of the time. But like, if you're watching fighting interviews, they're such down to earth guys who give so much a lot of the time. Uh, they're not all like Conor McGregor. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like they, a lot of them just, they pour their emotions out after they've had a fight. And even Conor McGregor does that a lot of the time. And I can connect more with that. Whereas some of these gamers, I just feel like, like you no offense, but they're a bit nerdy. Do you know what I mean? And that's kind of nice, but so but you can be nerdy and and nice. emotional and and. Do you think that's where Ninja is slightly? I think Ninja's nails got it. that. Yeah, he, he's he's a good talker, and and uh, and when I've seen him on interviews, I'm like, oh, I get I get why get people would warm to him. But and with parents. other guys, but with other guys, I'm saying like a lot of them 
do come across a stereotypical like gaming guys. like closed in their bedroom and never ever ever come out do type you, dudes you know do I mean? you also because i get that a little bit when i edit or when i lock myself away for a while when i have to do an edit I, you don't become different but you slight you the way your mind works changes a little bit because you're thinking about moving around things you're thinking about how am i going to make that music work there and talking doesn't become a challenge but it you no, when people talk to me way. while I'm editing, I'm the rudest cunt yeah. in the world. I'm like, fuck off. Yeah. Leave me alone. Just get out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. Put the doing- dick down. No, I don't say that. <laughs> no, he would never say He'd literally go, all right, I've got five minutes. <laughs> it would be. Suck it hard, no. No. Uh, <laughs> at that point, though, you would want people to understand that you've gone into a certain mindset. I guess that's what happens to these guys, mm. isn't it? I must admit, you see the frustration in these fuckers, mm. but like, yeah, I guess that's what it is then. And there's un- maybe I just haven't given it enough of a chance then. It just, but it doesn't mean you have to like it. Just no. because you understand that those guys are going into that zone doesn't mean you watch it and go, "Yeah, cool, I want to watch this." I, I, I like with with Shane or anyone like we've criticised Shane a bit, but I I do admire what he's doing yeah. from an from a business standpoint more than anything else. You've 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 masterminded this scenario where everyone's hyped for your content. Well done. It's a well laid plan, um, and and a bit like um, I understand it. I understand everything that he's doing right now. I get it, and even if I criticise it, I like to in my arena that's YouTube. I like understand why things are. And I guess with the gaming side of things, like when when KSI JJ played fucking FIFA, didn't take a fucking genius to it why everyone was watching. He was hilarious mm-hmm. as well as being good at the game. So when I watch some of these guys who are huge numbers, I'm expecting the same thing, mm-hmm. and that's when I'm left like, eh? I think you know what I mean. You're... So I just wanted to understand it a bit better. For me, it also feels like this is a whole new genre of gaming. Mm-hmm. Though. These are serious, hard... These guys call themselves athletes. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? They are not entertainers. Which who they then are also, not athletes, exa- for the record. They are, yeah, they call themselves sports athletes. And to, I mean, you know... Gaming I think, athletes or something. I think Ninja was included in the list of athletes. He, he's just been on the, on the front cover of ESPN magazine. Yeah. Do you think... Which is cool... I kind of rate that as a as an internet lad myself. Like, yeah, fair play, mate. You're breaking out. You're in the mainstream now. Good for you. But equally, it's bullshit because, you know, there are so many athletes who probably deserve to be on that magazine cover who might never make it on. That, the- I do worry a little bit about that. And uh, what was it? Yes, They should have had him with his top off with a controller in his hand. Partly. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> yeah. There was... Um, Oh, it was a podcast I was listening to yesterday. They were talking about how the MVP is voted for, how, you know, the best awards for FIFA. Modric won it this year instead of Ronaldo or Mm. Messi. They were talking about how people get bored of the same stories over and over and over again. Otherwise, genuinely, in UFC, if you voted for an MVP, who would probably win it? It would probably be, if it was a public vote, someone like Conor McGregor, right? Yeah, over and over Over and over and over again. And it would get boring, wouldn't it? People get bored of it. People get bored of LeBron James. LeBron James is consistently the best player in the NBA every year because he's six foot 10 or six foot eight or whatever. His wingspan is fucking huge and he's a massive, powerful guy who dedicates his life to basketball. I respect that a lot. But he doesn't win MVP every year because the NBA understands, and to some extent the Premier League and FIFA are beginning to understand, if the same people are always at the top, it gets boring. So if we hero those people, it gets boring. The same will happen, but gaming is just so young, we can't always just chase yeah. the numbers. And people won't keep clicking in a while on Ninja. They'll want to click on other it's people. It's kind of mad now, because like, how <laughs> we grew up. You'll never get anywhere playing games, and you'll never no. like the whole the whole thing about YouTube. Is, is that a real? Even a, a guy on the train yesterday was like, "What do you do?" I'm like, "I'm a YouTuber." I was just sitting there minding my own business, yeah. Like, and he um, was like, "And you make money off that?" Mm. And I just was like, "Yep." What I really enjoy is the. I went to a wedding recently, and people are fascinated when I say what, they go, "Where do you? Where can I see any of your videos?" And I'm like, "Yeah, on YouTube," and they go. No, no, like somewhere serious. And I'm like, mate, that gets more views than any of the shows you watch. Like, name a TV show and I guarantee you more people are watching this. The guys go, how do you make money from that? And I'm like, well, it's not just one revenue stream. And they're like, yeah, yeah, but it's the ads, right? You're like, it was partly the ads, yeah. Well, I I don't make any money off the ads. But they can't wrap their heads around the fact that this is a serious industry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They just can't. Bullshit bastards, uh. 
Well, I don't. Part of me thinks I don't want to explain it to you because actually I don't want you to know. It's our little thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's sort fuck of, off. Yeah, you go and back watch you stand as you little pricks. No one ever went. No, nope. yeah, but genuinely, no one who made coke in the first place went. Let me tell you the recipe. Like the colonel keeps it under wraps for a reason. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's similar with YouTube. It's similar with all these industries. You don't want everyone to know it. Speaking of food, um, yeah. while we're on it, lost six pounds on me diet first that, week. Yes, douche. Genuinely, that's great. What did what did you do, do differently? Um, I just res- I didn't be a fat bastard all week. Basically, understood. Uh, so, like the food I was eating, I'd have like poached eggs on toast. Mm. Then go at the gym. Brown bread. Um, I think it's a fifty fifty because I uh, brown like bread. Half and half. Uh, it's a little bit. It breaks up a little bit. You get that Hovis best of both. <laughs> yeah, Am I right? I yeah. Do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, then I go to the gym and after the gym I have like jack of potato with tuna which is nice mayo and then in I'll that? have uh, uh, little mayo little, little bit they, little they, they make it they put a little bit too much mayo for my liking but you know what not, not, not like me to criticise yeah yeah it? although as, as you know you know uh, and then probably like a protein bar protein shake maybe both when I get back um, can I a lot of people here protein bar protein shake uh, you and Joe have both been critical. Joe Weller, mm-hmm. friend of ours. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Um, one of the family. He was critical of some protein stuff. Uh, <clears throat> did it take you a while to find, because I know a lot of people watch for like your tips and stuff. Did it take you a while to find the protein bar that suits you? Because he just said a lot of them are just basically a Snickers with a bit of protein put in. Mm, yeah, I, I think, yeah, sometimes... You've got to be a bit picky, but I I, I found the right formula. Would you um, be better off sometimes just eating steak than eating a protein bar? Food's always better. Than the protein R- bar? Real food is always better. Protein is a supplement to the diet, so right. it's supposed to be something that if you're on the go, you don't have time to make real food, that's when you'll dig into that. But real food is always the best thing you can have. So tuna, steak, that sort of thing. Always Chicken the, good? Yeah, always. Yeah. Turkey always. I like. Uh, yeah, I turkey's like, really good. Yeah, it's good lean meat. Um, it basically tastes like chicken but steak. I'm, I'm thinking about putting uh, not a vegan on my uh, Twitter account because I've seen a lot of people have veganism as a almost like a hobby. Annoys me that it's slightly sociopathic. Like, you, isn't it? you sound like a sociopath yeah. when you do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's something a bit. No one gives a about fuck it. about what you eat on a day to day basis. It's a man. bit like putting Prius owner. Like in your, you know what I mean in your in your Twitter bio. Yeah. You know, thanks for doing me a favor and saving the world. By the way, do you, do you know all the production that went into that car was as much as the energy they saved? Exactly. Yeah. Um, do you know so where yeah. you plug it in when to charge it? Yeah. Where do you think that electricity comes from? Burning coal. Yeah. Um, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna what else is new in the life of Brian? Met me sister. Yeah, we've spoken about this, but I'm gonna. People I'm don't gonna, know about this. Yeah, do no, they? I'm gonna say that I'm, I'm gonna ask you questions about it so that other people. Well, we haven't really that. gone into it anyway. No, we um, deliberately have no conversations. So, yeah, um, basically, obviously, people know me. Dad was a wild man back in the day. Not like he that had wild another man. child with another woman. I I met my sister when she was born. I was about eight years old or whatever. Um, How when she was born? As in, like you were there? I, I I was I was around in in my dad's life at that time period. But um, as I've said, um, I stopped seeing my dad uh, a little while after that. And then she, her mom moved away Mm -hmm. and I never seen her uh, again Mm -hmm. at that point. So, uh, because my dad stopped seeing her as well. So um, yeah, recently we found each other, met up. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really amazing. What was it like to, how did it, tell me the everyone, timeline. Can I just say for the, yeah. st- everyone's first thing they're gonna comment is, imagine Brian with long hair and boobs. She does not look like that. No. Uh, she looks she like- She doesn't have a beard. No, she looks like a model. Like, no, I'm not even just saying that. She lo- she could be a model, this girl. It's, it's mad that she's related to me, if yeah. anything. But- um, Same eyebrows. Yeah. Um, so we had been chatting mm-hmm. um, on messages and then we agreed to meet up. So I'm standing there at the train station. Wearing the red rose. And uh, out comes this um, tall, loud, confident, funny girl, um, long hair and that, running towards us. And uh, we hugged and it was like life changing. Mm. I can't can't describe it any other way. Mm. Like I could feel like electricity going through my body. Like I was like, Oh, this is real like this is love this is actual like 
absolute love. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like I've never, I haven't, I've felt that before, obviously, but like it had been a while from like to have that family just moment. Do you know I what I mean? Found like a, a home vibe. Sort of unreal, thing. unreal. It was like I'd known Amy whole life mm. straight away. It was a mad. And mm. like I'd, I'd, I've kind of always been skeptical about. I've mentioned in the past about family, blood thicker than water. But you know, like you get let down by family and, and yada yada yada. And this, took, it just felt so different. Mm. Um, it was fucking mind blown. And you connected straight away. Yeah, yeah. I told her I loved her instantly. Like yeah, I, I yeah. felt it. I, f- I felt it. It was like fucking hell. Like, but I. It was on a different level to logic. Mm. It was like I, I feel like you're part of me, like an intuition. I could, sort of I thing. could just feel it. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, we spent the day together. Uh, what did you do? Yeah, I just said let's get drunk and tell each other our life stories, basically, Great. and just catch up and like everything that's happened. Mm. Just sort of give her, uh, and like we just ended up like laughing. Obviously, there's a few tears because we had sad stuff happen, and we were both like sort of I don't know because we connected so quickly we opened up really quickly yeah so it was great um but we had such a laugh and we had lots in common state of mind like little little things where you're like oh fucking genetics are a real thing like because mm. she thinks like me on cer- certain things um she likes Esker Lawrence <laughs> yeah probably yeah no but, um just bant she had great banter like we had a right good laugh and such she's such a personality mm. like that's where I found the connection like not um, an inward person or whatever she's just loud and proud and just herself like not frightened to just speak her mind and I love that I yeah. was like yeah you're my sister I'll take that and that's yeah there's something about and you've not had that so you sort of you, I guess there's the worry beforehand. What if we don't get on? What if oh, she's yeah. so different? I wasn't expecting it to be like that, though. Like, right. to be, like, life-changing. Straight away. Yeah, because it, it had an impact on me, like, that I didn't expect it to. So, like, when we had a really good laugh and uh, I took out the train station the next day, and when I was saying bye to her, I got really upset. Mm. Like, I was like, fucking hell, I've only just got you back and now you, uh, you're going. Going, yeah. Um, and she laughed. She was like, don't worry, it'll not take 21 years to <laughs> see Yeah, yeah. But, um... It made me think about women in a totally different way as well. Yeah. Like um, what I want in life. Mm -hmm. It made me, it had a, like an epiphany of like that feeling and that connection. I want that for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Just Mm -hmm. about moving forward Mm -hmm. um, and just. Did did it sort of change? Because when you, uh, the, I don't know, there's something there's something really key about having uh, women in your life if you're a man and m- men in your life if you're a yeah. woman and building relationships with those people, it change how you think about other women in your life and the way that everything's set up. Mm. Big time. Because I think big time as a uh, as a man, you always want to have close relationships, not necessarily with lots of women, but with you you know your mom uh-huh. or if you have a sister or a cousin uh-huh. or something like that it was it was good. those things really shape the way that you have relationships and it felt unconditional as well it f- right. felt like we've got each other's back like we both came into this with a great attitude and um she is a really special person like mm. she's i see a lot in her do you know what i mean and like i was like she's funny she's charismatic she's like a self to it like there's no holding back mm. um and she is just like i love her to bits mm. do you know what i mean i could i could just feel it coming out of me fucking chest almost it was um yeah it just made us realize like all right this is what it's supposed to feel like mm. do you know what i mean which is and when you've not had that I imagine that's quite a a big emotion to feel. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, I've had that with my mother, um, but it just reinforced it. Like, yeah, that's that's the feeling. Like, it's amazing, and um, yeah, it just moving forward with me life. It just it it just it rocked me, but in the, in the best way possible. Like, holy shit, like. 
I need to be much more. How do I word this? I need to. Uh, who I have in my life, I need to be really, really picky about. Mm-hmm. And because that's the level, really. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's what I should be feeling when I'm around people uh, that I'm close with. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it was, it was fucking amazing. I've, um, yeah, I've got lots of plans with her. Gonna see I was going to say, what's next? Yeah, it's going to be good. I don't really Days talk about... Days out to the zoo. I don't really talk... Actually, I might do. Yeah. I don't really talk about stuff like this on the podcast, but I, I felt like it was such a moment in my life. Mm. Like, one of the best days of my life. You could see, actually, you know I, mean? I think, was it you text me almost like straight away as soon as you'd... Uh, you took a picture with her and you sent it to me. And ever since you've uh, you've been quite different... Mm-hmm. Even, almost like more upbeat, more sort yeah, of uh, up, full yeah. of actual life. Yeah, yeah. Because I think a lot of the time as well, when you're you, it, YouTube can be quite draining because mm-hmm. we're all sociopaths. It can be <laughs> quite draining. So it there's times where actually you don't feel like doing a podcast, mm-hmm. and it's fair to say that actually over the last few weeks there have been plenty of times where you and I have had the conversation of should we just sack the podcast off today? Not because we're feeling lazy or we don't appreciate it. It was that you in particular were not feeling like you wanted to just sit down and have a chat for the sake of Mm -hmm. having a chat. And since I I think there is probably a bit of a change in that. And it, you know, I'm not saying we're not tough enough to sit down and have a chat about things, but I think it's almost just seeing a difference. You can tell when someone's just having a chat for the sake of it and when someone's actually got something to say, Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? I just feel like, um, I could say a lot of gooey shit right now about mm. her. Like, I could go on and on and on because that's how I feel. Do you mm. know what I mean? But, like, I feel like I was in a place where, you know, if I was to liken it to colour, I was in, like, a not a dark place, but, like, a grey place. So mm. I was like, and then she, it's like a fucking rainbow just mm. smashing into us and be like, like, colour. Put this right into us. And I, I was like, fucking hell, like, unbelievable. Just insane do you um that's the most weird shit i've ever come out with in my life but i I can't yeah. quantify it like mm. she's an amazing person and that's she great. makes me feel great when yeah, i'm around really her good. uh it was weird because i was watching her like we were about to go out and do something or whatever she was getting ready and she was just putting her makeup on and i was just like just want to watch you put your makeup on because mm. i haven't done this before yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. What i mean just the little thing, little quirks about her and stuff like that. She really likes food as well, which is like uncanny. <laughs> I was like, I've met the one woman in my life who likes food as much as, as much. You do. Not literally. I was like, how are you so skinny? Like this is fucking. And I've been gypped. Yeah. I. What the fuck is yeah. going on here? There's almost like I got there's the shit a, jeans. Uh, <laughs> she said, "Don't worry, we'll buy some new ones." Yeah. The uh, it is. I know it's. I know it sounds funny to say, but it's a little bit like an. I imagine it almost like an Adam Sandler movie. Wait, it it's almost bit. like you, but you play every character. <laughs> <laughs> no, she looks. Well, you know, she looks very different to me. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, was it? Were you um, not nervous beforehand? But you get like a sense of anticipation oh, about mate. it. When I was I mean? sat at the train station, I was like nervous but really excited. And when I seen her, I could have like lifted out our fucking shoes. I was yeah, like, yeah. just like hugging her, and it was great. It was mm. like. It felt so natural. Mm. I could imagine of growing up with her. Like I could imagine arguing about who gets the fucking bathroom and bullshit like that. Like I was like, yeah, we're we're connected, mm. me and you. Like there's no, I can feel it. Because there's a. I was but just... it's not like, it's not like that bullshit that people say. I can actually feel like, on a deep level, like I'm a part of her. And she's a part of me. I could feel it. it- Almost, uh, and you know, every cloud, those sort of things, it almost helps that you had that time apart because then when you do see those similarities, I think a lot of families, uh, when they spend enough time mm. together, almost uh, familiarity breeds contempt. Mm-mm. The fact that you two yeah. are not familiar with yeah. each other, but then you see each other and you understand it almost gives you a different kind well, of familiar no, I, bond. I, it, did, it was bittersweet because on the one hand, if I'd grown up with her, I might have felt a bit more, um, I might not have appreciated as much as what I do now. Yeah. Um, uh, and it, but it is sad that I've missed all those years with her. But equally, we've both got plenty of years ahead where we can do something about it and make sure we've got a real good like bond there. And uh, I'm definitely going to do that. And hopefully I'll make a good big brother. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine, uh, imagine me, uh, someone breaking our heart? Can you imagine that? 
Huh? That's part of it. Is I uh, can you imagine that with my with my girlfriend? I've met a few of her family, and they've told me if, if you ever hurt her, I'll break you. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, just, you, I know, with family, you sort of just get that vibe, don't you? As soon as you see that, because you know, there's there's science which says like even if you go, I know there are going to be people watching who are like they don't feel particularly close to their family or whatever. No, but I have never had that really. Yeah. I had it, so with my mum, but and. But I've not felt that connection with another human being before where I felt like, I don't know if fucking spirits are real and all this bollock. I don't know. But like, if it feels like there's something in there that's a part of me, that's a part of, yeah. like she's a part well, of that. That's quite literally like, the case. You share genes, you share yeah, like But it feels like that, do you know what I mean? It feels connected, do you yeah. know what I mean? So other, that was the, like, it's just not happened. Do you know what I mean? Which, because there is science which says, like, there. if you look at a picture of your family, you will become happier. You will actually be a happier person mm. just from looking at old pictures of your family. From so looking at some old pictures of my own family. I don't know if I'd feel like that. No, but that's <laughs> Probably the Probably burn it. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying, like, it is uh, not everyone gets that feeling. Mm -hmm. And not everyone is lucky enough to have that feeling. No, I felt like I'd won the lottery. And I, I when I was single a few years ago, quite a few years ago now oh, it's I, getting longer isn't I, it? it's a long long time ago now was, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's been a while since he had a wank I tell you for good reasons right? <laughs> but the point is it, when I was one of those people I'd walk down the street and I'd look at other people who were in love and I'd be like love that that's so great and there are other people <laughs> that is so you that's such a me thing to, to do I, right? I love how uh, Chris Rock does the difference between men and women and he goes when, when a woman's best friend comes and goes I've got a new man. Mm. He is fucking great. Like he's this, he's that, he's the other. And women look at this guy and they meet him. They go, "I want him." Yeah. Whereas men go, "I need to get me a girl just like my exactly. mate Scott." Totally different attitudes. So I look around. I look around. I look around. On I remember being single on Valentine's Day and looking around and all these loved up people. And I, when I, I'm saying this because there'll be people out there who I, a lot of people write to us and they are they've fallen out with their family, they've had fallen out with their sister, their brother, all these people, and they resent those people mm. or girlfriends or whoever, right? I remember looking around on Valentine's Day and being like, there's just so many lovely people in the world and they're all falling in love. And I sort of feel the same for you now, but in a very much a closer way, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where when you see someone else who's so happy because of that experience, you almost feel happier yourself because of it. Mm -hmm, Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Oh, mate, I'm, I've been buzzing. Yeah, no, you so can happy, tell. Yeah. You can tell, you can tell. When I get a message from her, I'm like... You get excited yeah, to read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is weird because... No, I, I being, obviously being a grown ass man, 30 years old and that. And all like, grown ass men call themselves that. The, the days of me getting um, excited over a text message or gone. Have, have, have gone in, mm -hmm. a long time ago. And obviously like, uh, it give me a, a feeling like, oh, this is fun. Like, it's nice to feel like this. Are you telling me you didn't get excited when, you know, a woman that you were dating or whatever would, would text you? It's different though. It's different. Not the same kind. It's almost like I'm, I feel quite childish when I get a, a message off her because it's like, right. oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Whereas, yeah, yeah. And this is raw truth, yeah. When I, when it's a message off a girl who, uh, you know, you're trying to move from A to B, B with, it's a different kind of excitement altogether, obviously. There's a different, yeah, obviously. Yeah. There's a different kind of uh, dynamic here, which yeah, is not the same. It's like, and maybe isn't something you're used to. No, I, I, being like a big brother and that, it's, it's fun, I mean, I like it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I, I kind of feel like I'm meant to be like that kind of guy. I think it might change your love life. I, no, I've already felt that. Mm. For real. It's made my, like, like I say, my attitude towards women's just changed yeah. a little bit. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna make sexist jokes every now and then because yeah. this is who I am but inside it's just who I inside am. yeah it has made me think of it hasn't changed my opinion on women as a whole no it's made me think that um women I do really like that I should treat a little differently right that and that's respectable right yeah I'm I'm trying to be a better dude you know what I mean I'm trying to be a better man Speaking of which, uh, you we were talking earlier about um, the way that women are portrayed in society, anyway. And, uh, oh yeah, yeah. And we yeah. were we were because there's been a lot of controversy or chat around that. Was it what cover was it? A Vogue cover? Cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan. They had that big fat girl on there, and, and that's a very healthy way of speaking about women. Mm. Um, the, the, I she is a big she was uh, I, I can't remember her fucking name, but uh, yeah, 
big fat girl. So there was a, a woman who was much bigger than maybe, say, the average woman in society is. Or there was something uh, along those lines. I'm going to have to bring this Look it up, up, because otherwise it feels disrespectful to speak about someone and call them the big fat girl uh, on the cover. Cosmo Fat Cover. All right, Tess Holiday. I want to know... Um, Her phone number? I want to know... Um, uh, Tess Holiday, how much she weighs... Um, if I can wait okay. 300 pounds 200 pounds uh, she was 280 pounds right. and she's 5 foot 5 so I to, just to put this into perspective I'm about 6 4 and after my little weight loss yeah. last week because some of us do restrict ourselves on the let's just all give Brian a big the, round of applause thank you yeah. thank you <clears throat> um, I'm not far off the same weight as her I'm, there's about 20 pounds in it I haven't, Do you know what I mean? I haven't put, shown a lot, uh, paid a lot of attention to this cover. Can I see the cover? Um, so, Tess Holiday. Gio, bring it up. Yeah. Good good guy, Gio. So, that's... Right. That's how... She's just a, a very, very large woman, mm -hmm. right? Now, obviously, um, she's quite a pretty girl. Like, uh, you know, um, they, they try to... Uh, I'm not sure what the goal was with, with, with Cosmo's from putting her on the front but uh, Joe Rogan came at it from uh, a, a very direct angle for Joe Joe's right. he sits on the fence a bit he tries to play the voice of common sense a bit more abstract yeah he, he, he but he was like you know you're, a lot of people are coming out now because of this and, and, and saying things along the lines of you know this is uh, uh, you can be fat and healthy and Joe was just called bullshit on that, you know, it's point not, blank. It's not this, yeah, it's not true, really. You can is be, it? you can be on the large side and be healthy. You can be plus size and healthy. But when you're morbidly obese, you are not, not healthy. You're not fucking healthy. No. And when people say, "Well, I'm," I look at me, I'm still here, and he's like, "Yeah, well, you can smoke cigarettes and still be here as well." But eventually, you're gonna pay the price for mm -hmm. that what you put your body through, and it's no different. And what Joe's point was is that. Uh, he, he, he was a bit pissed off. I don't want to quote him exactly, but he kind of said, it's ridiculous that if we had a 300 pound, five foot five fat man in his underwear on a fucking magazine cover, we'd look at him and say, there's a fat slob. Right. He needs to sort it out, do something about it. But when it's a woman, we're like, oh, you're beautiful. You're so beautiful. Like you're fat, but you're beautiful. Like, right. And it's ridiculous, you know, women, just as much as men should be subjected to the reality of a situation which is that you're morbidly obese and you're shortening your lifespan massively. I know some people might be watching this for the first time and saying, that fat guy's full of fucking shit about me. I'm aware of that as well. I'm trying to do something He's about it. He's not fat mate. because he doesn't I'm on a shit, fucking diet. Way. Yeah. I'm on a fucking diet though. I'm trying to do something about right. it. And I'm I'm a foot taller than this woman. Right. We're about the same way. Look, yeah. What's wrong with this picture? Right. All right. Well, you're too fat. That's nope. what's wrong with this picture. She can be fat if she wants. And for right. the record, I like bigger women. I, I genuinely find, like, you know, plus size women attractive. But not the kind of people that need to go on Jerry Springer. N not the ones who you have to cut the side of their house off to be airlifted. And just to be very clear, he, you're not saying she has to cut the side of her house off no, she to doesn't. leave. She's, no, she she's doesn't. She's modeling. Yeah. I'm saying, she has a perfectly more, lovely morbidly house. obese to me is where the line is drawn because I don't think that that's good for them at let's, all. But let's also you know be I mean? very clear. We were talking about throwing terms like sociopath around earlier. Mm. When we're having, and I'm not saying you're throwing terms around there are different terms for being big right some people are big some people are obese to be obese is unhealthy and it's just because we have a top end of the scale which is uh you know morbidly obese mm -hmm. clinically obese whatever you want to say it doesn't mean obese is is good <laughs> do you know obese is still not a great obese um, is bad i'm obese technically right now i'm trying right. to do something about that. right you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and bmi wise that is you can also be skinny Fat percentage i mean it's one of them in it I guess, yeah, and it's about finding a scale. It's also about finding but, something which the, is healthy. But the point is, this is about women and and, and they, how people treat them, basically, is what Joe was saying, and that it's ridiculous that we baby people, I think you know, from the truth. I like, guess, you're, you're morbidly obese. That's not a good thing. That's not something to be celebrated. If someone no. is... It, to, to, I think the point that Joe's kind of making is it's the same if we put... There's a reason why promoting cigarettes has been banned because we don't want people to be encouraged to take something up because they say it advertised everywhere. Yeah. And for the same reason, we shouldn't be promoting a morbidly obese body image because we don't want to normalize it. You know what I'm saying? So, And we're doing that because 
what he's saying is, I think, or, or the general consensus is we're doing that to make people feel better about how they look, which I appreciate. Yeah. I don't want anyone to feel bad about how they look. No. But medically speaking, scientifically speaking, you have to sometimes just accept the facts of this isn't good for you. Yeah. And uh, I guess to, to add on to that, and I, I don't know how deep he went, I haven't seen the clip. He, he, he cut pretty quick through it. Yeah. I like that. I, he smashed it. But then to dig a little bit deeper on that, you can look healthy and be really sick. Some people have, uh, you know, terminal cancer and can look perfectly well. That person does not walk around and say, everything's fine, I'm perfectly healthy. Do you know what I mean? The same with people who are, uh, you know, smokers, all those sorts of things. I guess the bigger, a big problem for me as well is it, they still give her the makeup, they still give her the hair that a uh, uh, skinny model would have, they still give her the swimsuit, they still package her up in the same way as you would package someone up who is the to look our best. classic Victoria's Secret model. They, they want that look great. And they talk about breaking down barriers of, you know, we're not here to be dolls for men, we're not here to be what men want us to be. I still look. I at can't that. believe people are still saying that. But it, do you really think men give a fuck about lip fillers and all this other some, bullshit that women some, are doing? Ninety-five percent of men, ninety-nine percent of men don't give a fuck. A lot of this is about women doing stuff to make themselves feel better, and I support that. But the days of people all put, I've seen people going. It was some old actress or whatever was on Twitter fucking banging on about we're not here for men to judge. You know? It's mm. like fucking hell, man. But those honestly, are, those are two separate. I mean, some people aren't there. No yeah. one's there for men to judge, and no uh, men are there for women changed, to judge. Though, this bullshit about how men dictate the image of women or whatever. Women are firmly in control of their own image these days, or more in control of if, it. If anything, the more so than men are. I, I think women are going off in their own direction. I support that. Like, do you? But. You know, the, we're not the ones to be trying to impress anymore. That's not what this is about. No, I, well, I think it, it's it's that there is not one. There will be a lot of women out there who may be watching this and are thinking, well, I dress up to impress my boyfriend or I dress up to mm. impress my friends. But you can dress up to impress multiple people. You don't get to up, obviously, you know, Beyonce's line yeah. of you ain't there, ain't nobody but else. What I'm to saying is 50 years ago, society was the way of. You know, it's about what men expect from women, mm. and, I, and and things have changed. And let's not continue bullshitting as if, because I don't know, women, uh, the whole fucking independent women vibe that like twenty years ago and that like that's been and gone now. We've accept men have accepted that. Men are a dying fucking breed, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? What a dying breed. No, men. The way men used to be, it's fucking over. Let's be honest. It, do you mourn that, or do you? Uh... I. I I am sad when I I hear how men are towards women these days. I think um, in what way? Well, women run run shit now. Like, let's be honest. And do you think that's a, well? That's not a problem, though, is it? That women run. I, no, I think it's gone from one extreme to the other. To the other. Yeah. Pa matri and patriarch. Yeah, I think we've gone from men being overly in control to generally now women are in control because really? we've changed like you know from divorce laws and that and uh the way that things go on like women just have so much power now right um do you and, think that and that's just women are a lot more aggressive than they ever once were i guess like um, and does that uh is that a problem do you think or do you think it's just that women are i think it should just be in relationships 50 50 like you know you have your say i have my say yeah but because naturally one person will be dominant uh, but I think we're just seeing a lot more women who are like, and I kind of like how women are going out now and getting careers and they're not expected to be, I mean, Baby and, machines and people could pause this right now and critique me. I, I do like that women can do what they want. Like, I think that's good, but equally, um, things are changing a lot. Like, do you know what I mean? Part of it for me also feels- uh, Grandparents are raising children these days because women are having kids, kicking them to the ground, I'm going back to my career. And yeah. it's like, well, you know, you were not it's in a position also, to raise the kid. Why did you have it? It's also not the worst thing to have a grandparent that raises a child. That can be a perfectly healthy home sometimes, but it not can, always. But it's not the fucking, it's not the plan in, in general, is it? Not, I, I'm going off on a tangent plan. here. Not but I, it's not what I think should be happening. One thing that is interesting, and it's a lot to unpack in the point, that Cosmopolitan cover strikes me less as empowered women or a message to men, or any, it strikes me as consumerism, 
wrapping up the idea of being empowered. It's there to shock a little bit, isn't it? it? Look what we're doing now. Look at us. People actually give a fuck about Cosmopolitan it, again. Partly. Or that ma- to me, it makes a statement, uh, or quite a few statements on many different levels. But th- one of the main statements it makes is, look how you can be bigger and you can still fit in with what other women think is the mainstream and think is you can still have makeup in the same way as all the pretty uh, the girls that you know the pretty girls in the traditional sense yeah. hold themselves up to you can still look the same even though you weigh whatever it is that you weigh pound, yeah. you can and the point for me is it's not about being happy the happiness is the start of where you are if you are overweight it's not about being happy and then just accepting it and then going cool well we'll just be 300 pounds for the rest of our lives then that's not healthy Mm -hmm. the happiness is the beginning to then going okay i'm happy now i feel happy enough to be able to go and work out or happy enough to be able to you know curb maybe unhealthy eating habits or uh you know be able to go and earn some money so that i don't have to buy just cheap food which then makes me unhealthy you do have to have a little bit of inner happiness in order to get your shit together like it's take uh, it's taken me a little while to start wanting to do something and feel like do cardio and all that like and when you start doing it you're like yeah i'm getting somewhere here and then you get more happy and whatever but the interesting side is we've broken down a lot of the myths that surrounded men so about men being the only ones who are able to be powerful and dominant Mm. and it's instead of breaking down those myths and then coming to a common truth which i don't know if we can find anyway we seem to have built up some other myths in order just to sell other things so instead of now selling products to men we sell more products to women we, mm-hmm. we have expensive makeup we have expensive hair dye we have all these whatever you want to call it all those things that cover is to sell to a wider mass market than they originally had mm-hmm. because that is going to make them more money in the long term mm-hmm. and we're still selling the same image whether the woman is big I don't know whether that's the correct term yeah, or what small yeah. we're st- what we've done up exactly the they're same. all going to go to Mac in the end or they're all going to go to the I same shop the makeup I, well, I've, I've been to buy uh, Christmas and birthday presents <laughs> Unreal the point stuff. is they're all going to go to Mac in the end they're all going to go to Bob, Bobby Brown or whatever you want to call it and they're all going to go and Lost buy this buys good presents great presents Mac is a great shop to go to and they give you great help so you're all going to go in the same place in the end you're all going to buy the same product and maybe before some of those girls or some of the women didn't think in that same way there's also the other side to it which I'd be interested to get your opinion on is uh, in the same way with the Shane Dawson documentary if we're conscious actors and we're not just there taking in the information and taking it on face value then what does the cover really do for us does it start a conversation between men and women about what is healthy is it to shock people into saying something like Joe Rogan says, which is, that's not healthy, I don't agree with that. Is that good that we can have one side of the argument to spark Joe Rogan's side? Because Joe Rogan's one of the few motherfuckers out there with a big voice who will say something about it, though. That's the thing I like about Joe, he's a fucking man. But is that good that Cosmopolitan can say that and Joe Rogan's got his platform to say that? Mm. It doesn't just... If we only came to the conclusion, which is... uh, you know women are beautiful no matter what or whatever women or everyone's beautiful but we need to find a way to lose weight people will go yeah but how did you get to that conclusion and you wouldn't I'm sick of that bullshit man everyone's beautiful it's absolute bollocks though isn't it we're not pretty do you know everyone's we're we're all into something different we're all into our own thing and yeah everyone is uh, don't get me wrong everyone is they I don't it's I, I think we should just treat everyone fairly. Do you know what right. I mean? We're, we're all our own thing. We're all unique. We're How all, fair do you think society is right now? I, I just when people say everyone's beautiful, like I get where they're coming from, and they're not meaning it in a bad way. But no I just way. think it's wishy washy crap. So, how fair do you think society is right now? Well, it's completely unfair. Obviously. Yeah, it's totally. It's the whole thing's set up wrong. Do you know what I mean? Do you? Here's a question: Do you think we can ever get to a point where society is fair? No. Someone will always suffer. So what do we do? Just keep working on it and try and keep making things better. Where are we going with this? This is. Well, I'm just. I'm wondering. I guess there are a lot of people who'd be interested to know whether you like whether this is too broad for me. We're setting unrealistic goals in society to try and get to something that we can never get to, and we're just distracting ourselves. Maybe that's what podcasts are for, Lawrence. Part what to distract. Yeah. setting unrealistic goals yeah partly sorry if we brought the mood down if that's not aware. a mood we've been high we've been low we've been wherever you want to go um, do Bitch. we do have we got any problems oh we've got loads of problems All right, let's do some problems I've, I love bad uh, problems that's my fucking problem 
Hi, my name is Lydia and I have split parents and have had for years, but I wanted to talk about my dad's recent wife. Just wanted to know if this is serious or just like a jokey thing that goes up on YouTube. Uh, basically, this girl's wondering, uh, with her dad's new wife, should she be worried about, you know, getting left out of things? How, how when, when your parents move on after they get divorced, how do you deal with that? Mm, I was very young when it happened, but uh, I don't know. Is it if he's if he's traded his old wife in for a younger, much hotter <laughs> model? Traded. He might be, uh, you know, a little bit excited to start off with. You know, enjoying life again. Men get very and, like that, um, don't they? They're like little dogs, man. Do you know what I mean? We really are and, little dogs. Uh, you know, when we get a new toy, you know what I mean. We, you get, we when you get a bone, we can't wait to play with it. Um, but eventually, wow, he will he will calm down and he will come back to his favorite toy, which is his daughter. I guess I don't know. This is this has gone weird, hasn't it? When your when your parents <laughs> break up, the, there is often a worry inside you as a, di- a child of divorce that you will be left behind. That there'll be so much happiness in their new life that you'll remind them of the old life, and it'll be like, oh, why are you around? Why why did you know? Why did we have you? Do you know what I mean? Can't stop being a bit depressed here. A lot of kids feel that way, though, don't they? No, I, I know, I know what you mean. But you know, your dad, if he doesn't make you feel uh, the way he should, and you start feeling a bit left out, just tell him. Just tell him, and you know, most dads will. A good dad will respond to that well and be like, "Okay, I need to make more of an effort. I'm getting a bit wrapped up in my new situation." Just communication. Communication is always key. This is it, mate. And also showing love. Be loving towards someone and Show they'll love. react well. Throw up the gang sign. Yeah, literally just walk into your dad and be like, yo, was good. <laughs> uh, got another question here. So my story starts with this girl who sits next to me at school. I've liked her for a while, but then I'm trying to push questions in about who she likes. And she says she doesn't like anyone in our school. I'm in year 11. We've been good friends for a while. So do I bite the bullet and tell her how I feel or... Do I not tell her and forget this ever happened? Love the podcast. Uh, by the way, let's get Sean back for a part four. Believe me, Sean Atwood is coming back for a part four. I saw Wild Man the other day on his YouTube channel showing people how to cook prison food. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, as for telling a girl how you feel, um, I, I, I hate to move on, but it's it's such a bullshit question. To is it really? With. Yeah, for me it is. Why? Because it's like... It feels so real to this person. No, but you've got to you've got to do that in life. You know what I mean. You've got to just lay yourself out there a bit and just be vulnerable. If you get hurt, it'll only help you in the future because you're going to just grow from that. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Stop worrying about your reputation so much. Stop caring about what everyone thinks. Just say to the girl, get do do it privately. Just say, look, can I talk to you about something? Never publicly, right? Just say, can I talk to you about something? I'm a little bit, you know, um, embarrassed, but I just wow. wanted to talk to you. And I would appreciate it if you just kept this between us because I do feel a little bit silly. But I like you. I was wondering if you like me. And, you know, if so, no? maybe okay. maybe we could hang out more. If not, then stay friends. It's cool. I'll like, just cut you off. You, you, you have to um, make it out like it's not as big of a deal as what... Because in school, a little bit like YouTube, every little thing gets blown out of proportion. Everyone's mm. a sociopath. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, uh, that's the key word for today, isn't it? Uh, but if you Sociopath. if you present it to her in a really relaxed and chilled out way, if she then shoots you down, it's not going to feel as bad, and she's not going to feel as awkward around you. Yeah, so cool. it's like it never happened. Do you know what I mean? Although to her, it will always have happened. She'll notice, and then never get as close with you again. So just be absolutely clear that you want. <laughs> so you just ruined it. this. No, it's Moving true. On. Moving on. No, Come when on. a guy comes out to a girl, I remember this happened in our high school with so many guys and girls. Guys would go and they, you know, they shoot their shot, and then a shot didn't land. They didn't, yeah. they didn't hit three. Do you know what I mean? I asked a girl at once, and she just sort of shook her head. Yeah. Wow. That's harsh. <laughs> what? Uh, no, but she was clearly embarrassed by the situation, and she I was should've... standing in a group of friends. No, she was like on her own, but she was like, <laughs> and I was like, okay then, that'll be me. Is it because you walked over and went? We should go out some time. <laughs> Ironically, I. That girl kind of uh, was impressed by like status a lot. Wow! And like she, she must look at you now. She she got with the after school. She got with one of the guys who got a job first and had a bit of money first, and, oh, that, no. and that was sort of her her lane. And now I'm like, 
This is what you could have had, bitch. Let me be, yeah. So you're a bit like the speedboat on Bullseye. I am. Yeah. People don't know that that's a game show where they used to give a real good prize away. And in this analogy, I'm the speedboat. I'm the prize. For someone who lives in the fucking Midlands. Moving Do you on. You know what I mean? Moving yeah. on. Yeah. You live in Lincoln and you've just won a speedboat. <laughs> oh. What are you going to do with yeah. that? Um, uh, <laughs> shine it. <laughs> clean probably it. Probably just going to tell my friends about it and then never ride it. Yeah. Hey, Loz, Brian, and blah, blah, blah. My name is Mm-mm, and I live in Mm-mm. One of my colleagues at work, let's call him Mm-mm, is a bit weird. He often talks about sex and we have some dodgy stuff on his Mac computer. Well, one day I invited him around for dinner, like you do with any sex-obsessed colleague. And he acted weird around my daughter, who was just 16. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I believe this, to be honest with you. It's, it, the, the, the way they've set this up sounds, sounds bullshit What he's basically asking is, how do I treat this guy who seems sex obsessed right so a guy seems sex obsessed and he's acting weird around your child probably yeah. back the fuck away that's clever. just a clever moving on smart yeah yeah back the fuck away don't talk to him no more yeah do you know it's what like I mean on peep show where he realised his new mate was actually a Nazi do you know what I mean right yeah yeah in that you've just realised your friend is actually a sociopath oh shit yeah goodbye back away Although sociopaths... Don't make any sudden movements. They're unpredictable. They sociopaths. are. Sociopaths. I learned that on the Shane Dawson sociopath documentary featuring a little bit of Jake Paul's channel. It is funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, though, when you... Uh, you basically... You fix Jake Paul in one place and then you just attach all these different qualities mm. to him. You basically go, sociopath, I, I, no, I did start thinking. I did start thinking. If we had a video made about you, for example, right? Yeah. And we had highlights of you where you say sort of nasty little comments on the, shit. on the podcast. Crazy shit. A little bit of dark music, mm-hmm. then a clip of a woman putting a, a cat in a bin, yeah. and then a, a plane crash, <laughs> yeah. a bank robbery, and just be like, and Lawrence McKenna is a prime example of why you shouldn't do these things. Psy- the psycho killing in the shower. Yeah, no, like, I feel like you can make any... The editing is so good, you can make anyone just look crazy yeah no you genuinely can yeah that's the that's obviously it's made easier by the fact that Jake Paul has done some dodgy shit obviously. it's the classic uh, it's I can't believe we're going back to that um, no but people love this sort of yeah. shit so Alfred Hitchcock uh, Alfred, what? no 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 no. we're not doing Alfred Hitchcock we're doing yeah yeah one. but just to finish that point Alfred Hitchcock said he spoke about the show, getting the smile from a man right and you know where he goes hmm. and what the that picture, was not the joker who said that no. Let's put a smile on that face. Where are they? Um, so he New Joker spo- film soon. Excited. And I was quite excited about that. Joaquin Phoenix. Good choice. Great choice. If anyone can do it, it's got to be him. He's got the hair that Heath Ledger had. Just He's a got horrible man. The same latitude yeah. that Heath Ledger had. The same sort of sensibility. He was amazing in Gladiator. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so you Enough edit. Will and he will have switched off now because he doesn't like movies. <laughs> you edit. Sorry, Will. You edit a picture of a woman with a baby at the start, man smiling in the middle, the another woman in a picture with a baby. You you think, oh, that man's kind. He he's, he thinks about women and he thinks about them being caring and nice people. You edit a picture of a woman in a bikini, same picture of a man smiling, back to the woman in the bikini. You think, that man's a pervert. <laughs> that man's a horrible guy. That's I should what, never have done that photo shoot. Th- yeah, but that is what this partly this documentary feels like to me if you edit a plane crash in around Jake Paul going let's go it makes it seem like he did the Al Qaeda yeah. yeah yeah Jake Paul is, is a terrorist and we finally got the problem and we finally know who did 9-11 uh, Insta friend zoned this will be a good one hi my name is <clears throat> and I go to school I'm rated about 8 out of 10 with girls <laughs> okay he's another one of those sociopaths who can you tell me how much people rate you? What number do you think people would give you? What I think they would give me. What number? See, do you? It varies so much, but I would exactly. have thought. I would have thought at a guess. Seven out of ten. Seven. Being honest, I. Okay, I can see I, that. But the thing is, it, it varies because I'm such a niche market. You're walking. So fetish. I think there are some women who'd look at me and think four. Yeah. But there are some who think nine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I'm, I've gone for seven. Yeah, and then they meet you, and it's a seven. I'm from Ireland. I like this girl, and I'm not sure if she likes me or not. Just seems, uh, just seems like it though. Because Irish she's, girls are hot one. because she's always texting me. She, uh, she's always. I think he meant to mean put 
her, but he he put puta, which means something bad. Puta. She was puta, her head on my shoulder. She likes you. And she's sucker. And <laughs> she's sucker my lick. Anyway, I'm a bit fat though, and she's proper good looking. Can you give me some advice on what to do? Ooh, it's tricky because you do see those. Don't kind read of Cosmopolitan because that'll not. That's just going to make you stay fat. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if that's how it works. <laughs> I, I don't think that is the way it works. Now, if he wants to get in shape, go. You know, do a bit cardio. Go on a diet. Stop feeling good about yourself. Make no, a bit. He's asking, but he's not asking about that. He's asking, does she like me now? Some girls like cuddly fucking men. Genuinely. There's girls out there, when I've talked about losing weight, they're like, oh no, oh no. And I'm like, why? And they're like, oh no. Because I like you thick with two C's, boy. And I'm like, wow. I'm always going to be thick. Don't worry about that. That's how I'm built. I like you thick with two C's. That's what they call, they call me, the girls, yeah. Wow. Yeah. The girls, call, the, sorry, the girls call you thick with two C's. Yeah, that's what they say. Right. Is that not, is that not a thing? I mean, it's definitely... That's what uh, they've been saying, like. Yeah. yeah. When, so what, when you take all your clothes so off, they comments, go, oh, you so No, 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 it was like on the Instagram shit and that, when they uh, comment, they're like thick with two Cs or daddy as fuck, as well as a comment I've had lately, which wow. is a little bit on the... That's on, that's on the social. A shit I just went up car, uh, con spying there. He was grossed out by that, but yeah. Would you say that's sociopathic? I, I, would, I wouldn't. I'd just say that's um, er eroticism. That's what they're feeling. They're feeling it through their, in their vaginas, aren't they? <laughs> I feel sick. They, they're feeling the they're, they're, they're funny fluttering, isn't it? The, the thought of me. That makes me feel ill. Uh, I'm a changed man, do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm a changed man. Look at all the change we can see. <laughs> After a night out on the, on the bedside dresser. Someone here is saying he's too nice. I'm 17. Are you cautioning me? I said 17. I think I'm too nice. Girls always seem to go for bell ends and use nice guys. Uh, and us nice guys never seem to get a look in. Genuinely. I'd say I'm a decent looking lad and I have a pretty good chat. Mm. Uh, I've always been, I've always, I've, I've been seeing a couple of girls, not at the same time, because he's a nice guy, but never anything really serious. What advice would you give to the nice guys? Tell them to fuck off. Tell girls to fuck off. Right? As soon what? as you treat a girl a little bit fucking like you're not asked, it's amazing. It is. Um, I've, I've, I remember I've been with girls where I've made the effort, you know, and they've yeah. maybe not been as keen. Right. And the minute I'm like, look, you're not making enough effort, you're done, fuck off. And I'm like, dismiss them. That is when the effort levels go up 10. All of a sudden, they're like, he told me to fuck off, like out of nowhere. The, the complacency with them, they, and gone, you know, and then they, they just seem more interested out of nowhere. I, I, there's a point where I start thinking, I might just go down the street and start telling every girl, fuck, fuck off, off fuck. right? You fuck off, you fuck off, you fuck off. And just see if one of them turns around and goes, well, I want to fuck him. Right. Because it's and amazing. Very low when I decide, I don't want zero. When I decide I'm not interested in a woman, it's amazing how much they all of a sudden become more interested. Right. What? So you get what I'm saying though. Women, I can't, they kind of want what they can't have. Women want a challenge. Women want a, a fixer up. They, they don't want a guy who is going to be easy to walk all over and get what they want from. Because where's the fun in that? They want to feel like there's a bit of a bit of an issue, a bit of a challenge here, or something to right. um, compete with, something to have an issue. So with. you're saying treat them mean, keep them keen. Isn't not it? not 100 uh, percent, right? Because you've got to. You're walking. You're talking got, about walking down you've the street. You've got to be you, off. but equally, if a girl is just bored with you you have to show her ah. that there's more to you than just mr nice guy it's about keeping it exciting w women 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 like a man with a bit of an edge to them and even if it's not as much of a dickhead edge as what i've got because there's a bit too much dickhead so much in me clearly yeah. uh but women so women like um Women like a man who is not afraid to all put of them in their fucking place when need be, because we all need to be checked. Mm. But some men are such fucking wet wipes out there that when a woman goes full bitch, they'll just be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When it's not even your fault, me. Take you me just, back. You just love her so much. Please, Glenda. You just love her so much mm. that you're willing to be a fucking wet wipe for her and let her walk all over you. 
you were doing yourself a favor by checking her and saying, I'll not let you treat me like shit. And you're doing her a favor because she'll want to fuck you more if she looks at you and respects you. Right. I'm here all week, motherfuckers. Try the veal. I think I've done enough there, mate. Yeah. I think I've said enough there. My other side to that is you can also build respect with women just by doing nice things as well. That's where the teamwork comes. Yeah. Treat them mean, keep them keen. No, treat them bad. Sometimes you'll make them mad. <laughs> it goes both ways. Do you know what I mean? Con's fucking business. It, 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 okay, well, let's wrap it up. Those are some great problems. It, it's been a fun show. Don't forget, there are loads of business problems we need to go through in there Yeah, we as do well. need to have a meeting later on today. But um, for now, thanks to everyone who's came by. Luckily, I don't have 17 million subscribers, so this is more of a community it's a it's a community we're so associate glad pass. we're so glad we don't have seven 17 million yeah because for all that money that'd be rubbish not as much connection yeah do you know what i mean and I, i'm a man of integrity I, I don't want to sacrifice that i'm happy to keep a small circle of sociopaths rather than 17 million normos i just want 10 million do yeah you know what i mean just a small circle yeah and keep then yeah yeah all good ones there's six billion people in the world do you know what i mean too many yeah too many who needs all of that get rid of some um so yeah that's what a sociopath would say uh, there's a sociopath somewhere in london making yeah. a crime um, otherwise known as the police don't arrest me just um yeah hit the like button and subscribe for more thanks for watching see you later